We've all heard the term before, the dark web. You'll never believe what you can find and buy on the dark web. Illegal drugs, guns, stolen credit cards, and organs are all over the dark web. Over the years, this topic has only come up more often. It's seen on forums, blog posts, and sometimes it even makes it into the articles of our local newspapers. But what exactly is the dark web? For some, it can be hard to find this information in layman's terms. That's what we're going to try and do here on Fact Addict today. Let's break it down into sections. Before breaking it down though, please make sure you're subscribed to our channel and like this video to help us grow. First, you have what's known as the surface web. This is the internet that we all use on a day-to-day -day basis. If you open up Google Chrome or Firefox or the browser on your phone, you're using the surface web. It's accessible to anyone, anywhere. Blogs, news sites, most host sites are found on the surface web. After that comes the deep web. This is a section of the internet that isn't available through a normal search engine. Pages that have been password protected and encrypted networks are located on the deep web. Other names for it include the invisible web and the hidden network. VPN servers and a bit of ingenuity can help you access the deep web, where it's easier to do things such as pirate movies and access other streaming services, among other things. In fact, this has become a very popular trend in recent years as the government cracks down on places like Kiss TV and the Pirate Bay. Then you have the dark web, which is well known for being a platform that hosts illegal activity. In fact, it poses a new and formidable challenge to law enforcement agencies across the world. This is because it's only accessible through means of special software. Those who use the dark web are virtually anonymous. Tor, the software that they run, allows the users to remain virtually untraceable. That explains what the dark web is, but not what exactly it can do. We know that it's a hotbed for illegal activity, but those who are just learning about it might not be sure what happens. When it's nearly impossible to trace someone, what do they get into? In simple terms, the answer is everything. There's no limit to the unsavory things that are found on the dark web. It's host to a variety of so-called snuff films in which a real murder takes place on the screen. It's also host to underground communities of other highly illegal materials, ranging from drugs that are otherwise difficult to get your hands on, to stolen credit cards, to illegal pornography. Other services, such as hiring someone to do a particularly illegal job for you, are sometimes purchased via the dark web. There have been documented reports of stalkers and assassins being hired through this encrypted part of the internet as recently as this past year. It's also often the start of a process called doxing, this is when private information and material about a particular individual is posted on the internet, typically with malicious intent behind it. Doxing someone puts their daily habits, their phone numbers, their address, their place of work, their family, even the school of their children on the internet. Often, this quickly evolves into cases of stalking, vandalism, and sometimes kidnapping or murder. For all that it can serve as an access point to these unscrupulous activities, the dark web itself is not illegal. Anyone with the technological means to access it can legally access it. The dark web also offers plenty of things that aren't so dark or daunting to take part of. There are social media sites on the dark web that allow people from countries with strict internet regimes and monitoring to contact those in other parts of the world. Forums and blogs are often found covering topics such as politics, often again geared towards countries that have a tight grasp on what news and information is readily available to its people. There's even an entire Wikipedia that's dedicated just to listing a chronicle of all the sites that are accessible via the dark web and certain search browsers like DuckDuckGo that have been engineered specifically to fit within the coding confines of the dark web. Like most parts of the internet, there are palatable things to find and there are things that you probably shouldn't go poking around in. There's no policing what's posted or offered for sale. You are the curator to your own experience. What you encounter and what you click on is a choice that only you can make. Media is not wholly good or wholly bad. The internet is no exception. Every day the amount of activity on the dark web increases. The technology that goes into keeping it protected and untraceable continues to develop and grow. It's virtually impossible to track the poster of a video or an item that's up for sale or the person behind a particular poster forum. This is both good and bad. The warnings that you hear online are absolutely applicable. 
Should you decide to browse the dark web, know that you're doing so at your own risk. Make sure you have a strong antivirus software on your computer. Give out no personal information and be wary of what conversations you engage in. On the dark web, you are your only protection, but it might just offer you the valuable information that you're looking for. If you like this video, please don't forget to leave a like to support the channel so that we can continue to bring you more great content. And speaking of great content, why not turn that red subscribe button gray and ring the notification bell? Your support means the world to us, and we see every subscriber as a part of our crew. See you in the next one!